Hello, this is Dr. Die. I'm going to demonstrate how you're going to be doing this experiment to find out the equivalent weight or equivalent mass of an unknown metal. Uh, if you were doing the experiment, you would be receiving several items from the stock room. One of them is a big tray here that you're going to fill with water, probably like two thirds of the way up. Okay, I'm going to put this down here. All right. And then you're also going to receive some interesting sets of tubing. One of them has what is called a desiccator tube on one end. It's a tube with kind of like a bulb in it. And as you can see, several connections, including a curved glass uh, tube at the end. And another kind of like a J-shaped kind of tube that has a stopper on the short end and just a hose on the other end. You'll also receive a thermometer and you're going to be picking up a piece of metal mesh that you're going to use and also a very tiny piece of metal which you will want to weight. So I'm going to use one of these little plastic boats so you can weight the metal. You can see it there. Let me pick it up so you can see it a little better. Okay, so it'll be kind of like a little piece of metal that you have in there and you're going to take the mass of that. All right. Uh, you're also going to have to obtain something called green acid. Now, let me explain what that means. Uh, it's actually just six molar hydrochloric acid into which we've put a little bit of a copper two chloride to give it a green color. That's so you can track it during the process. Now, you're not going to pour from here. So as usual, you will bring a small beaker to the uh, cart where this is going to be at. And as usual, just bear, you know, you don't have to be exact here. You're going to take approximately, I don't know, something like maybe uh, 30 to 40 milliliters. Just remember to pour with conviction or else it'll start dribbling down the sides. Okay. And you're only going to need something like 30 to 40 milliliters of the green acid. I'm going to put it here on the side for now. Okay. Now, what you need to set up is the following. This is the apparatus that you're going to set up. It's on page 20 of your lab manual. So you might want to refer to that picture as we walk through the following set of uh, demos here. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you need to get yourself a ring stand. And on the ring stand, you're going to put a clamp and you're also going to put in a uh, iron support ring. The iron support ring will also require you to put in a clay triangle. And on it, we're going to put a uh, glass funnel and that will hold it in place. Okay. Okay. The next part of your uh, assembly consists of attaching the uh, J-shaped tube very carefully here. Again, remember, always twist the rubber hose into the end of the uh, funnel. Be careful not to you know, break it or you know, cut yourself. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach the desiccator tube kind of upside down into this clamp once more hold it just tight enough that it will not fall down you want it to rotate around a little bit of course you don't want to crack the uh the actual uh, glass in there notice that the uh, other end of this should be long enough to be in a position where it can go into the reservoir here so i'm going to move this reservoir over a little bit here to make sure that it's going to fit in there and I also want to be able to make sure that this thing can turn. Okay. So uh, after having weighted my piece of metal, all right. And again, in my data sheet, I need to make sure I record that mass over here in the top where it says mass of your sample. That's your metal. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece of metal and I'm going to put it inside this uh, copper mesh. And the goal here is to kind of wrap it in the copper mesh. All right. 
I'm going to make like a little cage for it. The goal of this is that during the reaction, as the metal reacts with the hydrochloric acid, it'll start shrinking, of course, as it, as it basically gets uh, corroded away. And you want to make sure that all of the pieces of metal stay there till the very end, that they don't flow through. So we're going to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath here. And while I hold it in place at the mouth of the desiccator tube, very carefully, I am going to place the stopper part of the J-shaped tube. And once more, you want to twist the tube into the stopper to generate a good seal. You want it to be very tight, all right? Again, never push on the glass. Always push down into the stopper by twisting. And now I'm all set. And uh, what I want to do now is I need some water to chase this with, all right? I want to generate, again, a siphon of water all within this system that goes all the way to this reservoir. So you're probably better off taking a beaker of water uh, from the sink. I mean, it, has, it can be tap water, okay? And have your pinch clamp ready because when this whole thing fills up, uh, I want to hold it in place, all right? So I'm going to start pouring the water. That way I can check that there's no bubble trapped in the system. I can check that there is no leaks. And once it's full, I'm going to clamp it. And I'm going to inspect visually, make sure there's no water leaking out of anywhere. Make sure there's no bubbles. So you might want to squeeze a little bit on this thing at different points. Make sure there are no bubbles anywhere. Okay. So my system is now sealed. Uh, let me see if I can turn this around so you can see it a little better perhaps. There you go. So there is your desiccator tube with the uh, piece of metal in its copper mesh. Remember, copper is resistant to HCl, so it's not going to react. But the metal you have in there will. Now, the goal of the experiment is to wash hydrochloric acid through so that when it reacts with the metal here, as we saw in the introduction, hydrogen gas will be produced. The hydrogen gas is less dense than water, so it'll basically come to the top and essentially get pushed out. So we want to harvest this. And what we're going to do is get a large flask, fill it with water all the way to the very, very, very uh, uh, you know, edge there. And then what I do is I use a, a, a big rubber stopper and I kind of slide it in to make sure I don't trap any bubbles in there. Okay. I don't want to have any bubbles in there. And then what I'm going to do is while I'm holding it, I'm going to invert the flask into the reservoir here. Again, making sure I don't trap any air bubbles in there. And once it's inside, okay, I can remove the stopper. There's the stopper. And now my flask is inside completely filled with water and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the curved tip of my uh, tube here and kind of slip it underneath so that it's pointing inside the flask all right now if you're doing the experiment you want to place this in a way where it won't slide off or fall down okay you don't want it dancing around so probably what will happen is during the experiment you may want to have one of your maybe one of the teammates here can hold the flask in place while the reaction goes through, just to avoid uh, any sudden uh, vibrations to kind of like jar it loose and make it fall into the water and then cause you to lose your sample, okay? So I'm almost ready to start here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the pinch clamp and let the water drop to basically the bottom of the cone of the funnel here, all right? Now, very carefully, you don't want it to go too far down because you don't want to trap any air bubbles in here. All right, there we go. Now, if you have a little bubble, it, it won't matter. The issue is you don't want any big bubbles because they'll interfere with the flow of the acid and of the uh, hydrogen gas product. Okay, remember that we had this uh, beaker that had the acid in it. So I'm going to pour in maybe about 20 milliliters or so of the acid. Uh, the acid is denser than water. So once it hits here, it's going to start migrating down. Okay. So 
Tell you what, I'm going to bring this down a little more. I want it right at the very bottom of the cone of the uh, of the glass of the uh, glass funnel. And now I'm going to put in about you know half of the sample that I have here. Okay, I'm going to put in there. And the idea of the green color is that you can watch it migrate down the tooth. Right now, what you'll see is some kind of like wavy patterns. Those are called schlearing patterns. It's an optical effect of the mixing of two solutions of different densities. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the pinch clamp and allow this acid to flow again all the way to the bottom of the cone of the uh, glass funnel. And as it goes down, it's going to start moving down and it's going to start reacting with the metal. And you'll see the metal start forming bubbles. Let me see if I have something here that would allow you to see that. Uh, probably not. Uh, but it is foaming ferociously here. All right. Right there uh, in front of my hands. And as it does, it starts producing hydrogen gas that is going to start migrating up this tube. And it's going to start bubbling into the water inside the uh, flask. Okay, so I'm going to let it run a little bit here. And uh, while we do that, we will uh, take a little pause in the video here. Okay, and uh, I'll be back as soon as this is finished reacting. All right. Okay, we are back. And uh, at this point, you see very little bubbling happening. One of the things that may happen is that the liquid here above where the metal was has gotten very dark. That's because our copper mesh was probably dirty, had other uh, oxides and stuff in there that got uh, kind of removed. So what I want to do now is I want to take some water and give this one final chase to get rid of all the uh, hydrogen product in there. So I'm going to fill up the funnel here with water and I'm going to chase down everything that's in there all the reaction mix make sure all the hydrogen is collected there's no more stuff in there all right so i'm going to give it a good chase here and now there's no more bubbling i've gotten rid of it i want to make a visual inspection to make sure that all of the metal is gone so it all reacted and so now what i have is in my flask over here i have a collection a big bubble of hydrogen gas in there of course, you would be doing this in the fume hood to make sure that everything's okay. And uh, you would um, be taking care of things here. So what we're gonna do now is, we wanna measure out how much water was put, uh, was left in the flask. And I just realized that, um, oh, one second, oh, here it is, sorry. Once more, this is your apparatus. On your data, you wanted to make sure that you put in the uh, volume of water left in the flask, the temperature and stuff. But remember, the idea here is I want to know how much hydrogen is in there by knowing what is its volume, what is its pressure, and what is its temperature. Okay, so what I need to do is equalize the pressure. Remember that we're going to use a barometer to register the pressure of air on the water here so we want to equalize that with the pressure of the hydrogen inside the flask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the flask very carefully, very carefully remove the little tubing from here. Once more, bring in my uh, rubber stopper. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tilt the flask. All right, I'm going to tilt it until the water inside is at the same level as the water on the outside. And once it's there, I'm going to slip in the uh, rubber stopper and cover it and then pull it out. All right. And at this point, what I have is, as you can see, there's residual water and over here would be hydrogen, of course, mixed with some water vapor, which we'll have to compensate for later on. All right. Uh, at this point, because there's hydrogen here and it's flammable, I want to keep it away from sparks. So I'm gonna you know, do this in the fume hood. I'm gonna open this, okay? So I'm gonna open this in the fume hood. 
I'm going to let the hydrogen uh, just vent out. And now I'm ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thermometer. I'm going to take the temperature of the water in here because it should be the same as the temperature that the hydrogen had before. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, graduate cylinder, one of the large ones, and I'm going to measure the volume of water in there. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the sink. I'm going to fill up the flask and I'm going to read what is the volume of that. The difference between the total volume that the flask has as its capacity and the volume of water that was left in here, that would be the volume that the hydrogen gas was occupying. All right. A uh, couple of things throughout the procedure. For example, let's say that your uh, rubber stopper here was not very properly sealed and you had a little bit of a leak of acid. Uh, don't wipe it. You have to bring some sodium bicarbonate, some baking soda to neutralize it before you wipe it clean. All right. Uh, once we're done, of course, we've flushed the system with water. Uh, the acid has been tremendously diluted in this uh, reservoir here. So we don't need to worry about that. So very carefully, what we'll do is bring in like a waste uh, flask and you can put it underneath here and be ready to uh, open this and take back your piece of metal. Make sure you return the uh, copper mesh back to the stock room. All right. So I'm going to open it here very carefully. Okay, and I'm going to let this kind of flush down. There we go. There's my piece of copper metal. So I'm going to pull that out so I can give it back to the stock room. And the rest is going to be cleanup of the stuff here. Okay, thank you so much. In our next video, we'll walk through some sample calculations.